For those of you who are self-editing and wondering if you should be using Grammarly or Pro Writing Aid, this tutorial is for you. So I use both. I've used both for quite a while now because I've been planning on doing a video comparing and contrasting the two. So hopefully this will be good enough for you to help you make a decision. Now I use both of them. They both have a Chrome extension. Now, I did not enable either of them yet. I went ahead and created a quick um, part of a flash fiction story to just, with plenty of errors in it, to just let you know this is what Google recognized as errors. Now, if I come up here to my Google extension, if you use both Grammarly and ProWritingAid, they are going to sort of go on top of each other. So it's gonna be difficult to know which one's which, but they each have their faults and they each have their benefits. So let me just toggle on this um, Grammarly really quickly. And while that's opening, I just wanna say that the major downside with Grammarly is that they're not always accurate. I would venture to say that they're accurate of roughly 90% of the time. So they're accurate enough for someone who is still learning the basic grammar of things. They're accurate enough even for a writer who's not sure about specific things. Grammarly is kind of a train wreck when it comes to commas. And I'm not really sure all of the reasons for this, but they are a little bit. And then uh, my daughter actually uses it too, and sometimes she laughs because the the free version will tell her to fix something and she's pretty sure it's not right but then she quote unquote fixes it and then the paid version will tell her that it's an error so she kind of laughs about it um and i'm i'm kind of with her on this so it did catch a lot of my errors it doesn't recognize um my chinese word as one word it recognizes it as a name um, it does want me to edit out this word there, um, visit her there. See that? I made a mistake I didn't even know I made. <laughs> um, so this is, this is basically what Grammarly does. It edits in real time. There we go. It's usually on the side right here, and it shows you all of your errors. You could actually just click on one of those, and it'll show you where it is, give you more information about it. So um, I do love Grammarly. I love that it teaches you. I love that it edits in real time. As long as you are aware of where its faults lie, then you can use it to your benefit. So let's go ahead and close this and disable it. And I will show you ProWritingAid. Aid. Do, do, do. Turn it on from my Google Docs. All right, so Pro Writing Aid is very similar to Grammarly, Grammarly in some ways. It is very different in others. It has more colors and it edits for more things and it tends to be more accurate with grammar, which is ironic because Grammarly is supposedly all about the grammar. So it tends to be more accurate. So it, it um, edits for passive voice, if you see that here, passive verbs. It does give me a tiny bit of information, but doesn't give me as much education as Grammarly does. And then it is not always correct in the elimination of passive voice or in readability. Readability is another way that ProWritingAid edits, and I don't use that function at all. The reason why is they want you to write everything as if it is a formal English essay. I am a creative writer. Academic writing and creative writing are two totally different things. And so in creative writing, there are going to be times where you want to use passive voice or where you intentionally um, word things in a way that uh, messes up readability. For example, in dialogue, people do not speak the way that we write. There's something called prescriptive. I won't get too technical with you, but basically there are the rules and there's the way everybody does it. 
we don't speak in full sentences, we do all kinds of garbage that um, our English teachers probably find painful. So I do not use this uh, very often. This passive voice was intentional. Um, she tried to pull her hand away. There, there is her active. And then, but it was fused by an invisible force. So the reason I use passive voice here is because it is an action that is happening to her. So passive is correct here. So um, a machine can't catch those types of things. It's only going to always read it as an error. So if you know that going in, then you will know that Grammarly struggles with its commas. Um, and sometimes, ironically, with the grammatical structure of a sentence. I don't know why, I just know that sometimes they correct things in a way that's a little ski warpish. So with Pro Writing Aid, you're gonna want to ig sometimes ignore the passive voice and the readability that it edits for. Now, if you are looking for extensive editing, you have to pay for Pro Writing Aid. Uh, they have a limit on how many words you can edit at once. However, Grammarly has their free version and their paid version. And you only pay for the paid version. If you want the paid version, you have unlimited amount of words on the free version. So with my flash fiction stories, I think even with short stories, it's okay with a pro writing aid, but once you get up to like um, five pages, things like that, um, that's when it starts saying, this is really long. Are you sure you wanna waste your word count on this story? And it starts giving disclaimers about you're gonna have to buy, buy uh, the program for more words. Now, if you want a full tutorial on how to use pro writing aid, my fabulous friend, author Lamanique Mack, did a full f tutorial. She uses it all the time. I will link that in the description below for you. And um, I will just let you know that I use both. And the reason that I use both is because they have, they each have their, their errors and they each have their strengths and their weaknesses and I use them side by side, and I feel that it gives me a stronger piece by the time that I'm done. So they are not perfect. They are not going to find what an actual editor will find. I highly recommend an editor, if at all possible. I understand that a lot, a lot of self-published authors don't, but there is no replacement for a professional, in my opinion. But if you are gonna go at your own, I recommend both. Why not both? Use both. Um, I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, please like it and share it with any of your friends that are editing their own work. I do 10 minute tips every week and I do a writing workshop every month. So let me know in the comments below what questions you still have uh, or if you'd like to see a tutorial of them being used in a Word document.